to oh, know what the word pose means. There we go. There. You know what I really wish, though? I wish this tattoo that I have actually worked on this baby sometimes. <laughs> Soothing. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's uh, it's rough the first couple of months. Yeah, but she is worth it. Kia, oh, yeah, 100%. Kia was one of those that didn't like relaxing like at all. Uh, Aaron, at least at night, was calm. During the day, Aaron was super colicky and stuff. Yeah. It was. They were exact opposites because, of course, they were. Because why make my life easy? <laughs> All right. So, what do you think? What do you think Grayson's gonna be? In know. terms of like attitude, I don't know. Knowing my luck, angry at the world <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Murphy doesn't like one thing in the world. The only thing she doesn't like is getting her diaper changed. I mean. Suck it up, Murphy. Get somebody wiping your butt for you. Exactly. You only get that for a couple of years. Most people pay for that privilege. <laughs> Justin, you're still Lord Sigurd on Twitter, right? No, uh, no I'm JD Carroll 9. You, you tell him, Murphy. You're rooting around like you want a pacifier, but then you don't take it. Feed me some What's more. the ish? You cannot be hungry. I did just feed you an entire two ounce bottle of drink. She says bullshit, Dad. She is a Carol. Yeah, you're right. What is what is the newborn version of the pie valve? Maybe it's just that. That's a good question. Okay, let me pick you up, baby girl. All right, cool. So there's that. All right, so I got those. Boop, 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 boop. Nope. Boop, 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 and boop, boop. Cool. All right, and... Get the load of audacity... No. Oh, no. I am recording the Zoom call. All right. Testing. Audacity. You are listening to a podcast of the Geek.io Media Network. For all... Shut up, me. Now for a lesson. Come. All right. That can be higher. On to the new... Now for a lesson. Cool. All right. There's that... Okay, uh, and the intro video is not loaded in here. Fuck it, not doing it. All right, doing. Is somebody beatbox. That's not it. All right, doing the thing in three, two. You are listening to a podcast of the Geek IO Media Network. For all of our shows and more, visit geek-io.net. And to help support the network, head over to patreon.com slash geek.io. Hello, gentle listener. While Geek.io holds its talent to the highest standards, what follows will likely involve the sort of language usually reserved for sailors on leave. If you're of a delicate disposition, then perhaps you would consider a different podcast. Now for a lesson. Konbanwa, Anime Attacker Show e Yokoso. Good evening. Welcome to the Anime Attacker Show. You may have heard these words before, but I'll teach you what they really mean. Remember, we will be discussing all episodes up to the ones we talk about tonight. Anata go supporter o kimishi nanara soyo. If you don't mind spoilers, welcome. Go beyond! Yes, indeed, Kombawamida san. This is Anime Otaku Show, episode number 35. I am CJ Transporker Boat. Joining me, as always, 
are Josh, Food Motivated McGrath. I have curry. Curry, Japanese high schools are scary. High school girls are scary too. Say something, Carrie. Hi. My microphone wasn't unmuting. Hi. <laughs> and Justin naming 150,000 orcs, Carol. That's me. Oh, God. It, so many magic kills gone. <laughs> so many magic kills gone. Also, look at this cute little baby. It's a bye bye. Yeah, it's a, it's a bye bye. Justin's back, at least for a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Justin leveled up. Yeah. I did. I a class changed. It's uh it was rough you getting there. Man. It's a very long uh evolution process. Somebody kept trying to hit B and every time it did, Erica about strangled Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I blame you. Josh. I didn't mean to do it. No, I blame Carol time. <laughs> that that's no, awesome. then she would have came early. <laughs> she would have no. left early. You don't know what Carol time is, do you? I know Carol what my time. version of Carol time is, which is him leaving the show halfway through. Carol time is my family shows up to whatever they want, whenever they want. <laughs> Usually you know late. How late it is. Fun. Hey, Josh. Hey, CJ. What are we talking about tonight? So tonight, we have That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime, Season 1, Episode 15, The Jura Forest Alliance, and Season 1, Episode 16, Demon Lord Milim Attacks. We've also got The Seven Deadly Sins, Season 2, Slash 3, Slash 4, Slash 5, Episode 15, 18, 23, 47, A Blood Curdling Confession. And season B, episode blue, Death Trap Maze. That's some really Beatles. terrible episode title. The, yeah. We but have Mob like Psycho 2, 100. Oh 102. God. Yeah. I think it's 102. Way, season 2, episode 3, One Danger After Another, Degeneration. X. And season 2, episode 4, Inside... The evil spirit. We didn't ask first either. And take a breath for this one. Yeah, right. <laughs> Kaguya Sama Love is War, season one, episode three. Miyuki Shiragane still hasn't done it. Kaguya wants to be figured out, and Kaguya wants to walk. And season one, episode four, Kaguya wants affection. The student council wants it to be said. Kaguya wants a descendants, and Miyuki Shiragane wants to talk. <laughs> <sighs> Okay. Man, so we thought beyond beyond everything that we're excuse me beyond everything that we're going to talk about today. Uh, it is of um, utmost importance that after this episode or sometime tomorrow, it doesn't matter. Uh, Y'all need to go watch Mob Psycho 100, the episode that came out today. I will watch it in two weeks. <laughs> uh, mm. <laughs> Get. This is the highest rated anime episode on Reddit. The most guilds, the most silvers, the most platinums that in the last you know, since platinums have been introduced. It is unbelievable. It is the best animation I've seen in, in an anime in a long time. Just everybody go watch it. We're going to talk about these two episodes, which were also super good. But still, holy shit, I was blown away today. <laughs> Let us begin, however, with that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Hey, guys, by the way, before we get started, we have yes, okay. an, we have an invisible fifth chair this evening, and it is not Raul. <gasps> you want to know who it is? Who is it, CJ? Hey, you guys who actually listen to Small Screen Spoiler Show, Daryl's doing anime intros now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we dared him. He came through. And here it goes. Hi. You might recognize me from such century-old podcast as the Small Screen Spoiler Show. And I used to kind of, sort of, really be into anime. Well, I was heavily into insomnia, you see. And when you have five TV stations, your options for television at 4am are pretty limited. 
Anyway, today we're talking about that time I got reincarnated as slime. Episode 15, The Jura Forest Alliance. Jura? Nice! I know about this. It's a small island off the coast of Scotland where they have deer, a couple of people, and really nice scotch. Okay, let's get this up on crunchy roll. So, there was a big battle with some orcs which results in a meeting. After reading through the agenda and previous meeting action points, some dude called Guild designs to take blame for all the orcish deadly sins. When the ogres and the lizard men hear this, dot dot dot, and that's it I'm afraid. There's nothing else on Crunchyroll, just dot dot dot, but listen, your life could depend on this. Don't blink. Don't even blink. Blink and you're dead. They act fast. Faster than you can possibly believe. Don't turn your back. Don't look away. Don't blink. And good luck. <laughs> of course he has to go Doctor Who because he's Daryl. I was going to say because he's British, but you know. I mean, that too. I mean, Soleil is pretty fucking fast. Yeah. Por- pork and the us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, so thanks for spoiling half the episode last week, guys. I appreciate that. (laughs) Because this is definitely the episode where they have the meeting and he names all the lizard man and all the orcs. Not last episode, Josh. (laughs) So one of these days we're going to have to, uh, go to odd numbered episodes because, you know, a lot has happened in the last two weeks that we're not going to be talking about, and i got to make sure that I'm not talking about the two new episodes. <laughs> nope. No odd episodes for you. You only come on in odd weeks. So that, that's all that counts. Oh, shit. Sick burn. <laughs> so, yes, as we discussed last week, uh, the Jura Forest Alliance. Um, yeah, the fallout from the, the battle happens, and... He's feels like, happen. Yeah, all the feels. Uh, Good feels. Turns out that orc is the best orc. Yeah, it turns out that orc is the orc disaster's son, and he feels real bad. He feels real damn bad. Like straight up honor of my family, kind of. Yeah, he's the goodest boy. Yeah, uh, I am ready to just give my life. Please take it. Uh, I do love that they don't stick with the trope of the orcs just being, you know, faceless evil monsters. Yeah. They actually give it background and motivation and explain what happened. And this show doing consistently, consistently doing something I love, which is people communicating. Yeah. Like, uh, so we... As if that was some kind of lost art. I mean, if you actually watch any television whatsoever, you would think that it was. It it is. How how many how many sitcoms would just not exist if somebody just goes, "Hey, by the way." (laughs) Yeah. Just to let you know, X Y Z might happen. I I I love. By the way, uh, speaking of weird non communication. Uh, Dryad Lady coming up and <laughs> and Rimuru is like, yes, I don't have to deal with this. Rimuru is in charge. I hate you so much. <laughs> Dirt bags. <laughs> um. So that just, that was glorious. <laughs> I love Rimuru thinking that they weren't going to be in charge after taking charge of the entire meeting, deciding what was going yeah. to happen. <laughs> Like yeah, seriously. Yeah, the Rimuru, triads will do it. What oh, did shit. what did you think was going to happen? Like you are, you have been you have made yourself in charge this entire time. Like, dude, seriously. <laughs> also, anime pro tag, get over it. I'm surprised he has not called out the fact that he is obviously an anime protagonist yet. <laughs> Such a so, I think his fluff factor kind of messes with his brain a little bit that he forgets his own tropes yeah yeah i mean also this might not have been his genre if he needed to have his pc destroyed in a bathtub <laughs> yeah. yeah true he might he might be familiar with different tropes <laughs> i mean yeah but even those anime have pro tags that look different than anybody else <laughs> see See if he was really into those kinds of tropes. He's he's a little bit sad because you know even in this human's body he can't 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have no dick. Well, I mean, he could. I mean, he could give himself one. He could also. Apparently, that comes up later. Th- they can also manipulate tentacles because you know those kind of anime. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Just as planned. He is. He is. Uh, they are. Sorry. Jesus. Freaking last Saturday for no particular reason, misgendering my own things, and now, now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they they have proven that their liquid is limitless. So I mean, uh, lots of pumping. That's all I'm saying. Um, moving on, <laughs> because even I'm uncomfortable with this, <laughs> and that takes something. Let me let me tell you. Um, yeah. So orcs get brought in, and they're like, "We'll do anything you want. Uh, how about we make you actual com- members of the community? You're just like, you're the uh, you're the hard workers." You sure? Yes. Go do that. Oh my god, we can be useful to you. And freaking I'm, the orcs are good boys. Yeah, I love that learn rea- all of the trade skills. Yeah, I I love that their reaction is not what the fuck you want us to labor, but what the fuck you're not killing us. Yeah, right. Like, like you sure you don't want to use us for food? Like <laughs> we taste like bacon. <laughs> it uh, and then freaking damn it. Gabiru, stop showing up random places. Hey, hey, he's a good boy now. <laughs> Again, communication though. <laughs> like, <laughs> Gabiru shows up like, uh, I'm sorry I was a dick, but why did you save me? <laughs> yeah, shut up. You're and- not a complete dick. Exactly. Uh, so we have the evolution of the lizard men because Gabiru gets uh, exiled and is no longer allowed to be called a lizard man anymore. So he levels up into Dragon Newt. Uh, kind of. No, he he evolves into Dragon Newt because <laughs> all, he does, all of them, but all of not, them do. Not because of getting kicked out, though. No, no, no. Yeah, but yeah, he he is no longer a lizard man. Like he, that that was a thing. Is you are no longer allowed to use the th- you are no longer allowed to use the name of lizard man. And then he stumbles upon Rami, uh, Reamer, Ramiru. What the hell? <laughs> that's uh, that's the evil red Suraimu. slime. Suraimu. That's, that's that's the, the red slime. Yeah, exactly. That's also, the evil red slime. Ramiru. Did you guys notice how Rimuru named all 150,000 orcs and only named the lizard man chieftain? Yeah. During the meeting, <laughs> like what the fuck? Yeah, like. I guess because the lizard man decided to stay to remain like their own entity sort of like they're part of the alliance but they're not in the core community like the orcs joined yeah Yeah, because he named damn it they name the uh like anyone who lives in the town basically yeah they name his sister uh gabiru's sister who turns into waifu because why the hell not foo uh yeah i'm I'm calling bullshit on that one (laughs) talk about branching evolution path right (laughs) This that, this place hells with science. The face that Justin froze on is kind of great. It, it is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So um, so the Jura is it this episode that they get that they get company or is it next episode? Next episode is the company. Okay. Yeah. Because this episode we get um. Yeah, because uh, Gabiru shows up and. His sister shows up for completely separate reasons, and they all get names. Yep. Gabiru yeah. gets renamed by accident. Like, <laughs> Rimuru's like, I'm not going to fucking name you. You already have a name. It's Gabiru. Whoosh. What do you mean I can override names? Which is interesting because it shows that having a name is not the only, like, requirement for evolution. Yeah, I would have. Gab- oh, good. So Gabiru had a name this entire time and was still a lizard man. Yeah. No, he was an evolved lizard man. Not physically yeah. speaking. Like, yes, he was. He had hair. That's true. He was an elite lizard man, but he didn't evolve into his, a new... His species. sister had hair as well, and she was nameless. Yeah. True. But so. he, he, he was not a base level. Like, but they, he, didn't, he didn't go from, like, for example... Dragon, lizard like, to, lizard right, dragon man into dude. dragon, right? Goblin into hobgoblin. Like, they he's not that's what I'm saying by evolving. Like, 
if he just i mean he was an elite before he was an elite lizard man yeah, yeah. sure like he had the little star next to his hp bar <laughs> but he wasn't a separate species like what happens when Rimuru names things yeah i, I would the imagine reason, that... the reason Rimuru names are more powerful is because he just has more magicules than the Majin that named Gavir the first time. So. Yeah, it was, that's what I was going to say. Is yeah, it, It's just a matter of strength, I would imagine. And when a uh, pretentious asshole would name people that we'll meet next episode, I would imagine that they get the, a similar power up as when uh, Rimuru names people. And also, basically, the entirety of the village of the, the Alliance of Jura are all basically splinters of uh, Vildora. So yeah, it's true. That, he's basically spreading out his power that way. Yeah, they do, but not diminishing it because the because even when uh, I don't remember the asshole that named Geld in them, um, Gelmuto. Yeah, Gelmund. He um when he named the orc lord, when he named the orc he became the orc lord and then the orc disaster. When Rimuru named his son, he just became an orc king. Like, it it is definitely different branching. Like, his power comes from Veldora versus wherever the hell the demon lord powers come from. I also believe it has something to do with hierarchy. Possibly. Of of race. I'm pretty sure that the, the orc that he called the orc lord was already an orc king. So... Yeah, because he literally was the king of orcs at that point. True. It would be interested if it'll be interesting if they uh, make him become an orc lord eventually. I'm sure that eventually, at some point, all it, of everybody in that entire city is going to be OP beyond measure. Well, yeah, and then <laughs> some uh, of them already are. Right, right. and right. then cough so a. Eh? Cough. Even Gobita is OP yeah, as hell. Yeah, cough Gobita. Fucking the fuck? Gobita. Gobta, dude, the hell is wrong with you? And I love you for it. He's the idiot savant. Oh yeah, um, just <clears throat> uh, it would be very interesting. The le- the level above orc uh, orc lord, uh, what happens after when it branches off from orc disaster into wherever the hell that'll go? Indeed, and I just. I love also seeing uh, Rimuru's contractor background come into play. Oh, it's so good. Yes. <laughs> Simple engineering. Like, they've got an aqueduct. They've got indoor plumbing. They've yep. got all of this shit. Like, they have got a swanky-ass town. Yeah, and, and that brings the uh, the dwarves in. Because, uh, holy shit. Um, yeah, Dwarf King comes in and is like, all right, so either I'm going to kill you or we're going to join together and we're going to fight to figure that out because shown in anime. <laughs> and then immediately Rimuru realizes because he's been training with, uh, Elder, uh, Oni. Hakuro, yeah. I believe. Hakuro. Yeah. yeah. Um, and realizes immediately that the Dwarf King is also trained by Hakuto. <laughs> like, oh, I know what's going on here. The next attack will be from above. <laughs> <laughs> and the rule was, if you can block my strike, you win. Yeah. <laughs> Rimuru solves the issues by not fighting once again, because unlike other uh, shonen anime, he realizes, and also Isekai anime protagonist, he realizes <laughs> that fighting is not the only solution to things yeah diplomacy so uh, they become friends yeah yeah and i i do love how this king has like because there's a lot of shows where like you know the neighboring kings are complete idiots or just incompetent or malicious for whatever reason yeah no gazelle dwargo knows what the fuck he's doing yeah and he sees this rising nation coming to power. I need to see them for myself. Hey, look, they're good people. I better be their friend. Yeah. Uh, then on his next visit, he brings a gift. And, or is it the first visit <laughs> that he brings a gift? Is the uh, asshole <laughs> researcher. Yeah. 
it's the second visit where at first they come mm. and they party and yep. he recognizes the Jura um he recognizes uh Jura as a country. Yes. Jura Tempest with the capital city Rimuru that was named by a bunch of fucking drunks. <laughs> I love that so much. And then uh, they establish their treaty and they're like, cool, we're allies now. We're going to talk more about the details later, but cool. This is awesome. Okay, bye. And then he shows up. Hey, I brought you a present. Peace. And then leaves again. Yeah. He's like, I literally can't put, I I can't do anything with him because I don't trust him. And I don't want to kill him. So here. He's too, yeah, he's too useful to kill. So here you can have him. You can have this. Uh, Reamer's like, I'm going to shove him in the cave. (laughs) (laughs) Also, I love the orcs getting, you know, beneficial treatment of a little orc in the sun and everything like that. And yes, I am aware that, you know, newts especially are are cave dwelling creatures. But hey, Gopta and you assholes go work in the caves farming flowers. (laughs) Like, I love it. It's so great. And yes, I, I'm aware that it is their natural habitat, but it's still, it's like that shot of the orcs get to be able to work and their farm labor now. Congratulations. Yeah, well, I know in Gabiru's case specifically, it's because he can't quite be trusted yet because he's a fucking imbecile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting to see where the uh, Dragon Newt powers go. Yeah. Um, Especially because they have wings, but their habitat is caves. Yeah. Uh, Josh, you've been awful quiet. I just... Uh, the show, man. <laughs> this show. Right. Is so good. Um, so, what do we say we jump into the next episode? Let's do it. That time I got reincarnated as slime. Episode 16, Demon Lord Milim Attacks. Okay then, let's get the Crunchyroll description up again. And it's the same as the title. Okay, fine. In this episode, there's a demon lord called Milim. I'm not sure if it's a lord who's a demon, or lord of the demons. I guess he could be both, of course. Anyway, he attacks. Damn it, CJ's paying me by the line for these intros. Let's go to the reviews. Transformations from monsters to sexy people are just too boring at this point. You shut your foul mouth. That's never going to get old. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So we are. He's not wrong. No, he's not wrong. So we are introduced immediately to the hierarchy of demon lords, which we kind of got introduced to after Gelmund got demolished <laughs> completely unzoned uh we have that other uh harlequin faced dude and then we have a couple others and then we have that one guy who made uh uh Rimuru's girlfriend into ifrit <laughs> leon and then we have of course because we have to exactly the waifu one <laughs> Hey, I'm just glad that, you know, anime is finally, what is it? Anime is finally representing the uh, people who love honey as much as I do. So I feel (laughs) really included. But did it have to include fucking clowns? And ass. (laughs) Ass. So much ass. So much ass. So are any of you guys uh, caught up with? the next two episodes I, I know i don't want to go too far or too much further into this but uh not today's episode okay but yeah her regular outfit is way more normal so uh, it's all good i would imagine the, this yeah. show has not proven to me in any way that they stay 100 percent strictly fan service uh even uh, secretary like when she's in battle mode like the boobs don't matter <laughs> Right, and that one goblin girl has finally put on a dress once the uh, pre- once the princess showed up. Yeah, and showed them how to make real clothes. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, th- this show has not proven to me at all once that it's going to be the entire uh, Sanketsu needing to remove more and more clothes to be more and more powerful. <laughs> so yeah, 
Millum shows up in her, uh, I'm going to be a meteor into the ground. <laughs> Huh. Took Let, me thirty. Let's just, let's just let's just start off discussion with this episode saying that Millen is fucking rad. She is so cool, man. She and gets I love Dick. Yeah, she does. I love how Rimuru has it mostly handled with just talking to her. Yeah, and then the, the Kijin show up, and they're like, "No, this is our this is our Rimuru Sama. We must protect." Mine, 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 mine. <laughs> They they fight, they attack, they protect. But most importantly, they get smack. <laughs> because man, she's just like, yeah, no, I hate you all. Stop this. That's straight up, Duncan. <laughs> Actually, she's like, hey, this is fun. Let's play some more. Yeah. Ray Maru's like, all right, guys, seriously, you're gonna get yourselves killed. Stop. <laughs> and then. Even Great Sage is like, yeah, you don't have a chance. <laughs> She's like 10 times more powerful than you are, my dude. Uh, shit. Um, 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 um. I bet I can defeat you in one strike. Whoo, please do. Honey. <laughs> Honey Dukin. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, honey to the face, and she's like, no. What? You did. You didn't do it right. It's do, honey, do. I got you, Josh. I got it's, you, Josh. It's it's, <laughs> but it's not a honey do. It's honey. <laughs> I, I also I, honey do is the inferior melon. <laughs> Uh, you and I, Don't Josh. I, it's it's. <laughs> um, it, it's got layers. It works. It does. <laughs> yeah, it's just honey to the face, and she's like, "I need more of that." And he's like, uh, "Don't kill us, and I'll give you more of it." <laughs> got it. Yeah, we're good. Just give me more of it, <laughs> and then I'm just gonna follow you around because now you fed I me. Now like I am it. home. <laughs> yeah. No. Milim is the embodiment of the the t-shirt feed me and tell me I'm pretty. Yes, exactly. <laughs> just like this is this is how you get puppies by the way. You feed them and then they never leave. <laughs> and then everybody's like, "Uh, should we be freaking out right now? I'm pretty sure we should be freaking out right now." <laughs> and then Rimuru makes the mistake of telling Millim that they're not interested in becoming a demon lord. Yeah. She's like, well, why not? It's so fun. You get to fight everybody. But I don't want to fight Although, everybody. Technically, he's already in the hierarchy because he already ate a demon lord. Yeah. That still hasn't that still hasn't fallen out yet. Like, I want to see where that one goes. Cause yeah, like I mean, the or I can already assume that episode 23 or 24 is gonna be Oh, yeah, I'm a demon lord slime now. Cool, fam. Yeah, right. Or uh, someone telling Rimuru, uh, you're a demon lord. You didn't know this. Yeah, you kind of ate a demon lord, like all of them, <laughs> like at his pa most powerful. Like you didn't even, you barely weakened him with your auto battle. And <laughs> yeah, like still want to see if what cool powers he got out of that one. Unless the honey generation is the power that he got out of the orc, which would be no, a very weird power. Sweet, sweet honey. <laughs> that's the that's the same thing that they use to make the swords. Yeah, the, uh, the replication stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, my guess, my guess is that um, because of the whole like swarm power that they can now actually like bestow abilities onto people, maybe like share their abilities with. Uh, comrades, possibly Party maybe that for all now. Maybe that's the reason why they didn't die when naming one hundred and fifty thousand orcs. <laughs> Beyond the uh, say in power up, then maybe it's just that yeah, they're they are now legion and they can create this without with li with less strain on their body. I'm also guessing it has to do with the fact that um, orcs are probably lesser monsters than ogres. That's entirely a possibility. Um, also, uh, it may also be along with predator. 
because they even commented on the whole predator versus um, hunger thing or whatever. Um, yeah. Starvation. It's, yeah. It's probably a bunch of a bunch of factors. Like the fact that Raymond leveled up like fuck by eating the orc lord, whether or not they became a demon lord themselves by doing so. Um, the fact that orcs are lesser monsters than ogres and God only knows what other conditions. Yeah, it would be it would be kind of cool to get a um, get a story or like get a explanation on that one. Not don't take an episode of of it, but it would be kind of cool just to get a like uh, like uh, Toriyama used to do with the Daisenshu series with Dragon Ball. Like just release a supplemental thing just for us to. And now this is the point where Justin's gonna come and say, "Well, in the light novel, they go through and they properly describe all of these rules." I haven't read the light novel, so you guys got me there. <gasps> like yes. <laughs> Although my friend Ryan has been consistently telling me that I need to keep watching the anime, but also just go buy all the light novels. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. Um, then I, I just oh, love everybody's. So, so, oh. so one point, one point that I did, I did want to bring up. I didn't get to talk about it this week, uh, last week, because I wasn't there. Um, the way that they portray Gabiru in this, comparative to the light novel, people don't like Gabiru in the light novel because he is a super dick. He is not just, he is not just like a pushed forward by his hype men. Yeah, he is actually a jerk ass, and uh. he actually got all of those goblins to come with him when he was originally fighting all of the orcs, mm-hmm. so that they could be meat shields. They make him a lot nicer. They make him a lot nicer in the anime and the manga. Yeah, like he's actually a he's a likable character. I mean, he's an idiot, but he's a likable character at least. Yeah. Um. It, I mean, he's more likable than Mineta at least in my, yeah. comparing him to my hero. You know. Yeah, he actually has some redeeming qualities. Yeah, I, idiot character versus idiot character. I mean, it's apples to grapes. Yes, but. Gabiru is on the same tier as Mineta. Um, absolute trust for the Jura Alliance, by the way. Like, I I love that. And it's not like a obedience. It is an absolute trust. Hey, Milim's here. She's not going to kill anybody. She's going to live with us. Mineta. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not a supreme leader thing. He's, they, they all trust him because he's earned that shit and when he's like yeah she's here with us okay cool <laughs> she's we're, here with us now we're besties yeah, oh my god <laughs> we're not just friends F- saying friends feels weird yeah you're right we're besties we're besties we're besties okay we're besties <laughs> please don't kill me Murphy is very entertained by that. <laughs> nah, she, she, she's, nah, she's, I actually need to go. She needs to be properly put down. Uh, yeah. Right, hold on one second before you leave. Don't you leave. need to write this down as her first ever podcast. Yeah. Uh-huh. She, she's got an appear. She's, I mean, she's got a voice appearance and everything. For yeah. real. Guest appearance, Murphy, Amelia, Carol. Oh. All right, uh, then go ahead and leave so I can fix the stream after you leave. Thank you, Justin. This is the only time that I'm not going to mess with you on this one. Thank you for coming on, dude. Appreciate it. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. She waved. <laughs> Enjoy the baby. Yay. Break my stream. I know that nine-day-old babies don't actually wave, and she was just stretching, but the timing on that was perfect. Yes, it was. Okay, <laughs> and I don't have a three.
Boop. Boop. Say something. Something. There we go. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm not replaying the intro. Sorry, Twitch. Uh- <laughs> um, yeah, like the whole reason that he was alive to save her is because Deanne didn't kill him. Yeah. And he was, I'm guessing, just there for money or whatever that they, they were doing. And he's like, nope, I feel like ass that this woman who murdered my the rest of my crew is lying here dying. Uh, I'm a fixer. Also, she's a hot giant. So, I mean, win-win? <laughs> um, she has an awesome peg leg, though. Yeah, she does. And can we talk about that badass earth bending dance that she was doing? Oh, my God. Uh, so just because she's the strongest fighter doesn't mean that it's her only talent, man. She's a, uh, she's a multi-talented girl. And that was some straight up capoeira shit right there. Like I am waiting for the moment where Deanne unleashes that in battle and just wrecks everything. Oh yeah. Um, this, this actually, while minor in the show is a major turning point for her. Um, it is a, it's a, she's not just beating about the head for Meliodas. She is developing her own sense of being and it happened to come because freaking uh uh i'm tired and i forgot his name their name jesus gother yeah gother why oh my god why am i bad at this <laughs> um it, 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 all this came for gother fucking around and being an idiot <laughs> Um, speaking of Gother though, we did get the drop in this one that <clears throat> Gother is, uh, is a, uh, commandment. Yeah. And not Meliodas, like everyone was set up to believe. So bravo, bravo show. Yeah. Meliodas is a separate entity entirely. Uh, he is, he is never been nor ever will be a commandment. Um, he is separate than that even before he became, uh, a human loving swine. Um, it's interesting too, that Gother fell victim to their own curse, which is why we have the doll. Yep. Exactly. I I love no sense of self. You've got no sense of self, (laughs) which makes me wonder if their if their commandment was like charity or charity or something like that. Oh yeah. Like you shall not steal. And so they lost their sense of self or something. I don't remember. Oh no, it's, it's it's Gother of selflessness. Yeah, selflessness is their commandment. Yeah. So whatever the again, I, I don't remember honestly what the uh, commandment violation is. Yeah, they lose their sense of self and become a doll. Um, yeah. So take that, people thinking Meliodas was a commandment. <laughs> this show is very typical in a lot of ways. That is not one of them, thankfully. But his two brothers are. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, they are definitely commandments. <laughs> it, it's, they don't fuck around either. Those are two really, really ridiculously powerful commandments. Um, yeah. No, I mean, other than Deanne developing and the beginning arc into the tournament arc, which we're going into, um, not much went on in this episode. Um. So, anything else before we move on? I don't think so. Okie dokie. Seven deadly sins, maze runners. An elaborate trap-laden deadly maze constructed by the Dole Banana people begin to weed out the weaker challenges that have gathered for the Great Fight Festival of Mortal Kombat. (laughs) He is stuck on Mortal Kombat. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah, because every tournament arc has to have a preliminary first, and, uh, here we go. Got the maze. Yeah, too many people entered this tournament. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> I can't imagine. I'm, I'm amazed that Britannia has any population left at this point. Right? <laughs> um... Yeah, we have uh, we have Elizabeth and Meliodas being reunited, but more importantly, Bond shows back up, and 
I love the uh, playful, re- the point back to the first season where they're like, yeah, punch each other. And it's all kind of joking. And then I think Meliodas forgot that he now has a power level that's like six times higher than Bonds. <laughs> <laughs> and Bonds just shrugs it off. Also, Meliodas and whoever was with him. Arthur. Arthur. Yeah, that's what I thought. Meliodas, did they, did I miss see something or did they seriously just turn around find some random cooked food on the ground that they have no idea who made it or where it came from and just sit down and started eating it yeah that's exactly what happened <laughs> <laughs> that is 100 because we got the uh we got the sand dragons or whatever they were called i forget and um uh, get the little ones and uh one got it and showed off that uh, pi- uh that hawk actually has a power now and can become whatever he eats. So Hawk is Kirby. Congratulations. <laughs> Mazel Tov. Good job. <laughs> um, he's cooler. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Also talks less. That's a hint. And <laughs> it's cuter. Yes. Uh, Hawk is very cute, but yes, Kirby is cuter. Um, and then immediately, oh yeah, those things can evolve and then they're the big ones. And But... There's no way those could be here. You had to say the thing, didn't you? <laughs> Thankfully, these guys have names, so they're <laughs> their abilities to be able to stop these things. And then Meliodas and Arthur don't kill any of them, except for taking the tail off of one of them and eat them without seasoning or anything like that. <laughs> and wonder why it tastes bad. Yep. And then, yeah, Bond somehow decides to announce his present by catching some of this, cooking it, and <laughs> leaving it out for them to find on the ground. And then surprising Meliodas when they start arguing over who's going to hire the mystery chef. Yeah. It's like, I guess if you're going to rehire me, I'm here to work. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Bond. You best boy. Good job. I, I love the bromance between yes. Meliodas and Bond because so much. Because it's never a, like, it's never really like the Goku Vegeta rivalry. It is just, they are best friends and they have been for ages now. And like, it comes through and their character are, their characters are so good together. And it never shows like, even though like Bond's like, I'm sorry, I tried to kill you because I was going insane without the love of my life. Eh. Whatever. <laughs> it's all good. She's here now. It worked out. Yeah. You get your girl back. Good for you. <laughs> but shut up and let's do this thing. But what about Elaine? Oh, yeah. She's taken care of. And there's freaking <laughs> there's King and uh, an Escanor protecting her. Like, oh, yeah. She's good. <laughs> <laughs> she's fine. <laughs> Are they ever going to explain how she's still alive? Maybe <laughs> they should have done that already by now, but they have not for whatever reason. Does it get explained in the you know what? Yes. Yes, it okay. does. And it's 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 what you think it is, by the way. It's exactly what you think it is. But it's weird that it hasn't been said yet. The power of love. Yeah, exactly. It is the power of love and her being, you know, the queen of fairies. Because they don't actually have mortal relationships outside of mortals, but whatever. <laughs> God shenanigans and love shenanigans. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly what you... So in the manga, it's just like, why are you still here? Oh, our love's too strong. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Checks out. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Also, uh, Jericho's there who has been proven that she can... Uh, t- she's been t- shown that she can take a hit. <laughs> Yeah. That that girl is the most protected girl. <laughs> Especially once that sun comes back out. Man, that maze is going to get leveled real damn quick. <laughs> you see this maze? It is not a maze anymore. It was a maze. It's, it's not so amazing. No. It was amazing. Now it is not amazing. Now it is a floor. <laughs> That's a good question. Escanor's ability, does it depend on the time of day or the sunlight actually hitting him? Uh, Both. Um, He could still, high noon during a rainy day, he is still approximately the same power as he would be on like um, daybreak kind of thing. His His power is amplified by direct sunlight, but strictly because it is daytime, he can absorb some energy. Okay. 
Basically, as long as the moon is not out, his energy can flow. Or as long as the sun is technically up, even if it's obscured. Yeah, exactly. It just, it limits him. And that's, you know, kind of like, how do you, like I said last time, how do you remove Thor's major ability? You remove his hammer. Like that's, that's a plot device that has hit more than once. Um, yeah. And then, Hey, Elizabeth's over there. How are we going to get to her? I don't know. I'll be here waiting for you. Um, you know, we're just going to go through. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. We went a little too ham. <laughs> and Arthur's just like, what the fuck are you guys? <laughs> You would think with him palling around with Merlin for so long that he'd be less concerned about these things. Like, But Merlin is also her own special entity. Yes. Like, I'm also concerned with how unconcerned he is with the fucking cat on his head. Yeah, that cat that's just there now. <laughs> like, like yeah. That's not your Digimon. Fuck off. Druid things. Freaking druid things. <laughs> Like, Merlin would just snap her fingers and they would be over there. Yeah. And that's a little bit different from watching two broskies yep. arm wrestle their way through a magical maze wall. Well, uh, how, do you, how do you do it? You make her so she has to keep most of her magic power to keeping a form. Because right now she is a ball. <laughs> Which is, I'm guessing, the reason why they haven't brought her out. Because, yeah, again... She is her most of her job is Deus Ex Machina. Like, she shows up, breaks shit, Meliodas fixes it, and then breaks it more, and then they move on. <laughs> and they have to keep po- toying around because you can't constantly have overpowered, 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 because that's just it works on things like One Punch Man. But that's satire. Like, when you're trying to make an actual storyline, you can't have that all the time. You have to... And bravo to the show of making creative ways of doing that and not just being like, oh, I just don't feel like using my power right now. Like, there was a reason why Melios was weaker than what he was supposed to be. You know, Merlin being for... Like, almost being killed and being forced into ball form makes sense. Yeah, but they did it in a way that, like, it doesn't really feel like a fridging. Like, she still participates in the plot. She still contributes her knowledge and her expertise. Yeah, and she still has magic. She was teleported Meliodas over. She's just not ridiculous right now. And I kind of like it when she's not. Like, because it allows her character to bloom, and she's more than just super magic and a pair of tits. Like, and again, bravo to the show for doing that. Um, yeah. yeah, that is, that is actually, I'm pretty sure that's one of Sanderson's laws is basically, uh, yeah, limitations are, Sanderson's second law, limitations are greater than power. Yeah, exactly. And this show does that very, very well. Um, and the manga has said more than once that they have learned lessons from shown in the past. Like they, it's like I've said over and over again, they're huge, they're huge fans of uh, Toriyama. So they know Dragon Ball. They know the bullshit that goes on in Dragon Ball. Yeah. Waiting for Meliodas is a viable plan, but why? (laughs) You don't really have the Piccolo, like the character who is powerful for a moment and then gets shoved into the background. Like each of these characters, each of the seven deadly sins is a wrecking machine on their own. It's the reason why you immediately go into not God powers immediately. All right. Speaking of not God powers, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk some mob psycho. Still, the one intro that I will not skip. By the way, this it's intro a good is intro. so good. I even skipped the Seven Deadly Sins. Well, oh, yeah, we got a new seven. We got a new uh, intro, by the way, for Seven Deadly Sins. Yeah, we did. It's nice. It is. I like the old one, but yeah, we, when Escanor gets involved, you have to you have to let him shine. <clears throat> I, I'm still still lamenting the loss of Man with a Mission, but me too. Yeah, it, it's not nearly as egregious as the Ancient Magus Bride switch. Correct. Yeah, like each of the intros on this uh, of. Uh, Seven Deadly Sins are kind of like My Hero, where they're all various levels of good. 
Like, some of them are great. Some of them are just good. The first one was just kind of okay. <laughs> and then you have the uh, the Hinomaru switch, which is a whole other can oh. of worms. Anyway. Yeah. Mob Psycho! I'll tell you about that later. Mob Psycho. So, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um, I still hate Reagan, by the way. Reagan, whatever the fuck you want to call him. I don't like him. I know Justin's like, but wait. I'm like, no, I don't like him. You, you aren't supposed to like him right now. I know, and I don't... Because right now, the way that he has been developed, he is nigh irredeemable. Like, I'm sure eventually he'll get there, but right now, I just fucking hate him. He reminds me of too many people in my own real life, and thusly, the, oh, just wait, I'm sure he'll be okay factor is really hard for me to get. Understandable. Like, I know far too many people that are like him. Um... So, this episode, I'm trying not to get into the next episode. Um, geez, I'm kind of with you on this one where I'm trying to remember because I just watched episode four, like, not too long ago. This one was the Urban Legends, I thought. No, that was two. It, it was basically a follow-up to the Urban Legend. This was people oh, right, take, they, taking jobs. Right, right, right. right, right. Oh, right. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. The, the, the website. The, the asshole. The hipsters. College kids. Yeah, the fucking millennial kids. That's right. By the way, I love Dimple like trying to piss off the uh, the the ghost dad, and he's like, "I can't. I'm not that. I'm powerful, yes, but I just want to be with my family." And Dimple's like, "And even if, yeah, and even if I even if I wanted to, not in front of my kid." Yeah, and Dimple's like, eh, "Good job." <laughs> Goes back over. I tried to anger him. Why? <laughs> because Dimple is an agent of chaos. Yes, he is not necessarily evil. He is just chaos. He exists to stir the pot. Yes, <laughs> I like and this, it. And this is this is a good example of Mob starting to develop his own agency. Yeah, where you know Reagan really doesn't see spirits as people; they're just spirits, and you need to exercise them because they're well, here he and they need to. He be doesn't gone. see spirits. Period. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Well, metaphorically, he doesn't see them as yeah. as like as living quote unquote beings. Yeah. He, he just, because he can't see them, he can't interact with them. So for him, they're just an abstract concept. And for Mob, they're people. Yeah. It's uh yeah, and that just that shines in this in this episode with the the separation of the two of them. And uh, I I I really enjoy that. I do love the the clip of Rega and being like, oh, if you have that photo, I can exercise it right here. <laughs> Scissors. Or no, gets ready to load it up on Photoshop. his Photoshop. Yep. No, it's not the same. We want it dead. Yeah, but why though? We'll pay you this time. Um, I mean, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, can we talk about how they stiffed him? Yeah, Reagan's a bad businessman. <laughs> you take that payment first. Yeah, dude. Why didn't you take at least half up front? Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, just the the level of cerebrality this season. Yes, is escalating, and I love it. Yeah, we we definitely get a lot of that into the next episode. This episode was kind of just a. I mean, it's the monster of the week that they started off the last couple of episodes with, which is fine. I'm not arguing with that. This show. Uh, the first three episodes being monster of the week kind of things allows you to allows newcomers to be brought into the universe. Even though like, I mean like me, I watched the OVA, but Raul, like we heard last week, hasn't watched any of it. Like he watched the first couple of episodes of season one, but that was it. And, um, at least these allow you to be brought into what this universe is. It may not be the minute details of it but <clears throat> here's your beginner's course yeah then episode four happens <laughs> Oof. yeah it does well that escalated quickly very quickly <laughs> so we get to see one of the things i love about reagan his uh, complicated character that he is which is he's not an idiot most of the time like sometimes <laughs> like, hi, high, high int low whiz i guess um, because or high whiz low int or something 
I mean, most of it comes into charisma being his uh, high stat. But yeah, the fact that you know they the this rich guy hires them to come out to the to his house. I'll pay for your taxi. Why are we taking the train then? <laughs> um, and all these psychics are there to supposedly exercise his daughter. Yep. And Reagan wins at rock paper scissors with psychological warfare, which is hilarious. Um. And goes into the room and everybody falls for her spiel of Papa hits me. I don't know why I'm chained up. Can you please let me go? I think he's possessed and sees through all the bullshit, points out all of her inconsistencies. See, Reagan, by the way, um, still has w- low wisdom. It, well, at least it's a 10, but he took proficiency and expertise and insight. There we go. <laughs> So he gets his double proficiency bonus. <laughs> but yeah, he uh, he saw through that bullshit some miles away. Oh yeah, you guys I are do like dumb. Just don't listen to her. Like she's she's not lying. She's lying, you guys. Also, I like that. Uh, not only did we get a cameo from one of the dudes from Claw, but the guy from Episode Two is back. Yeah, the dude from the uh, the Urban Le- Urgent Urban Meth the or little <laughs> Urban Legends episode. Yay. Yeah, he got his he got his beads back, and they immediately got broken again. Yep. Poor guy and his beads. I have a feeling that's going to be a running gag. <laughs> he shows up because he has actual power, and then his beads get broken, and then making him useless. Um, I do like the uh, the the famous guy. Like, okay, so I want to go back to the art really quick. Yes, Reagan is blonde Saitama. I understand. Why is this show so good at making background characters infinitely more interesting than their fucking front end characters? Because the dude with the pecs and the breasts and the bikini, like, it's awesome. And again, we got into this. Dude, for me, is a gender neutral term. So it is. I loved them. Like, I loved the background characters in this. Each one of them was more unique than any of the main character cast, which is bizarre for me. <laughs> I like the re- I like the reversal, though, to be honest. Yeah. Each one of like, them. Try- would- Try playing spot the main character in a, in one of those shots. Yeah, each one of them would be an anime protagonist in their own show, except for Reagan and Mob. Like they are literally just blonde and bowl cut Saitama. <laughs> and come at me, Justin. <laughs> I think in Reagan's case, it's probably to highlight the fact that he isn't extraordinary the same way all these other people are. Yeah, and I know Mob goes beyond his goes up above and beyond to make himself not extraordinary. Yeah. And you see some cool stuff done with his art when he explodes. I I am excited to see the, um, my first live, like quote unquote live explosion next week. Cause I'm sure that's going to happen. Cause we got up to 92%. I think it was, uh, 82. I think it was, but yeah, he's he, he on the brink. Yeah. Ne- next episode, we're going to have an explosion and I'm excited. Um, dimple proving that, uh, he's, Capable after he takes control of Mob's body to fight the uh, super strong psychic turned serial killer that's in the girl's body. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want you want proof that Mob is going out of his way to make himself look unassuming. Look at what happens to his face when Dimple takes over. Yep. <laughs> and instantly more personality. <laughs> yes. And I mean, I, I I applaud this show for doing different things with the art at any given point in time. It just, it irritates me that it's a, it feels like a template until it's not. Um, but it's not something that's really going to make me super, super angry. Like it's, it's a grump at best. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, the, the real, real dark story on what the, the person possessing the girl is, is they were a superstar psychic. But they've seen so many people die and they've killed so many things. It's going to stain anybody. They are completely and 300% jaded. Yeah. They couldn't do the one thing. He couldn't do the one thing that he wanted to, which is save his mother. And 
uh, he just fuck the world then. <laughs> I'm going to become the strongest malevolent spirit. <laughs> Yeah, which we we find out how Dimple got into the condition he's in. Yeah, because he got his shit wrecked by this guy. <laughs> he got he got drank. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, he, and that's that's the reason why he's so small. And even when he was in the uh, the cult last year in season one, like his power being so limited, is because yeah, ninety percent of him got sucked up into this thing. It's real makes, damn cool. Makes me wonder what's going to happen when Mob invariably just defeats him. Yeah. Um, it's going to be, and um, Raul, like, <clears throat> and even though I mean, I've not, I've watched the OVA and they had some of these where they would show the explosions at least. Like, it, the animation quality in the next episode is going to go through the freaking roof. <laughs> Like, even at the tail end of this episode, it was already escalating. Yeah. Like, can, can we stop for a second and appreciate uh, Astral Projection Mob? Right. Completely. Like, it looked so interesting. Yeah. And very simple and interesting. Like, he didn't do much with it. He's naked, but he still has this detail to him that is super fascinating. Well, he, even before that, when he was outside of the body before oh, yeah. entering... Like the, the the kind of like pure white spirit with just the eyes and kind of slightly resembled an axolotl. Yeah, like that's so freaking cool. Um, yeah, and then we're gonna get the fallout next episode on that. Yeah, one. then the fucking mind games start. Oh, literally. Yeah. yeah, dude, just showing that like, yeah, Mob's strong, but <clears throat> this is his world. Like, you came into my house. I'm you gonna, came to the wrong neighborhood, motherfucker. Yep, I'm gonna wreck your shit. <laughs> and his shit doesn't need get wrecked. Hardcore. Yep. To a point where Mob is technically cement and sand on the floor right now. Yep. <clears throat> and then gets poofed into a world where he has no powers. Cause, because this guy wants to see what happens. Yeah, just because... I want to see I want to see the world burn. Let's see what happens when I take away your abilities and put you back into real life. I'm excited. I almost watched the next episode today, but nope, I I stick by my whole I'm not going to watch past what I watch on the show because I've bitten by I've been bitten too many times of me doing that not only on this show but also on S4. I I no. <laughs> we are watching these many episodes and that is it. <laughs> no more. But I am excited. Indeed. All right. <clears throat> well, let's tone down the excite a little bit here. Let's talk about Kaguya-sama for a little bit. I really want to hear Daryl talk about this show. I know. It makes me sad that he didn't get this one done. Uh, so this show is getting <clears throat> slightly better. Yes. Slightly. <laughs> and we were discussing this in Slack. It's not egregious to the point of Junie Tyson, Radiant, you know, any of those ones that we sat and actively hated. I'm just kind of bored with it. Like, it has funny, hilarious moments. Like, I laugh really hard at this show. But, man. It's, it's not consistently entertaining yet. Exactly. We get to that in episode four a little bit. Uh, episode three is still kind of rolling along with the introductory episodes. And if you have the three three episodes and out rule, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, these, I do. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I, I do love that they fast forwarded the intro for episode three, though. Yeah. Well, Justin said something about like they kept jumping between production studios or something like that. And that's the reason uh, why. Magazines. Yeah. With the. And that's why episode one and two were literally the same fucking episode. <laughs> um, so it, it's hard. The worst thing is it's hard to talk about this show in this because it's antic payoff, antic payoff, antic payoff. 
and you have some things that are humorous in this, like um, Kaguya trying to, you know, be trying to be overt and failing with trying to show that she actually cares for him and. The you do have I I want more side characters because the secretary uh, is infinitely more interesting because her entire plot arc is not. I am a. I don't want to call them horrible human being. I am a. Ultimately dislikable human being, who has one thing going for them, and it's the premise of this show. The secretary is fleshed out and is good and is adorable. I really wish that Crunchyroll subtitled the music because I have a feeling that in the end of this episode, she was singing about major plot points and we totally missed out on it. Probably. Probably. Yeah, because for some strange reason, this episode, we get a completely different ending. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just her dancing around the student council room, singing about the two of them and the student council. I under I heard those words, but I couldn't make out anything else of what was said. I wonder. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, knowing the anime community, that shit's been at least typed out on what it means. Yeah. <clears throat> kind of like whenever you get. Um, Mouth mo- mouth movements without any audio behind them. Like e- every time, if you go to R- if you go to the subreddit for that show or even R anime, like you get what was going on there. Kind of blows things if you do it, but man, they're they're good good for them for doing the research. Apparently, they put the abominable snowman in the uh, in the school walk. Yeah, you didn't see that. I didn't see that. That's hilarious. Oh, yeah. This does give some character development to Kaguya in this with Kaguya, her car being broken down, saying, I want to walk to school and meeting an adorable little girl. And she's still late. And it's like, I'm never going to be able to walk to school again, aren't I? And then, of course, because the show has to show, out comes the president, says, get on. And then she gets to swoon because she gets to double bike with uh, Shiragane. Well, th- that was the thing is half of the reason she wanted to be able to walk to school was because she knows that he bikes to school. Yeah, that's true. And she was planning to intercept him and adorable small child sidetracked her plans. Yes. Baba little one got in the way. In an adorable way. And just, you know, and every so often you get, like, the character development of that. And especially for Kaguya, who is a legitimately bad human being. (laughs) Shiragani is not a bad human being. He's just vacant. And full of toxic masculinity. But that doesn't make him ultimately a unlikable human being. Kaguya is not a good person. (laughs) Yep. And that's one of the things I don't like about this. Like the two main characters are <clears throat> one's a bitch and one's vacant. And I don't like it. <sighs> Episode four came around after that. <laughs> um I really want to talk about the last one. <laughs> Um, actual coherent plot line through all four of these snippets too, finally. Right. <laughs> Which was nice. Uh, all of this building up towards the, uh, the French students coming in. Um, Kaguya with, and we immediately start with Kaguya with ear, uh, cat ears on. And if anybody didn't know from a million of miles away where that one was going, uh, probably haven't watched the anime. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Bravo on them for making it not just the cat girl thing, but when Shiragani puts it on, she's all. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and can't... then just glaring at each other because they're trying not to smile. Yes. 
take the picture. Do it in 4K. <laughs> Can you guys like try and smile at least? No. <laughs> we are <laughs> Jesus. Oh, secretary. We are smiling. And then uh, we have to go out and do shopping, but uh, I guess we gotta do a thing. And then the uh, then secretary's like, "Nope, we're gonna play the forbidden word game." Brilliant, by the way. Again, I adore the secretary so much. <laughs> She's so fluffy and such a sentiment role, and I freaking love her. She is fantastic. It's like she gets a word and he's like, check it out. There's no way she's going to be able to say check it out. And then she starts rapping. <laughs> and it's that same super awkward, jilted, like amateur rap that was in Zombieland Saga. And it was just real good and real dumb and it, real entertaining. Yes, exactly. Like it, it was so in, it was entertaining like, and then she, and then to prove that not only Kaga, you know, how to fuck around one, we get backstory on her, her mom's a freak. Uh, no, that was next episode. Never mind. Uh, or next snippet, a couple snippets from now. Um, yeah, she like, how am I going to get Kagi to say love? I want her to say love. I want to hear her say it. What do you hate? <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the mind games this snippet were fantastic. Yeah. And, and yet uh, again, proving Chica's a freaking mastermind. Yes. Like, these two characters, yes, are above their grade, like, high up there. But man, yeah, Chica's, she goes to this school for a reason. <laughs> like, <laughs> and she is on the student council for a reason. Like, they made a big deal in the first couple of episodes. There's no way that these that anybody can lead this student body without being, you know, the best. And just because she's funny and cute and has boobs does not mean that Chica does not fucking belong here. <laughs> yep. And at the end of it, he ends up getting the same result that he pr predicted and was upset about it, even though he decided that that was the result he wanted. Yeah. Sure, Gani, dumbass. <laughs> Bonk. Um, and then actually a relatable episode, a re relatable snippet after that one. Uh, who's going to text first? Phone paralysis. <laughs> uh, Maid is the best also. Yeah, just boop. Here you go. Yeah, I called him. What? My mind is not ready. <laughs> and then his dad answers. I want to talk to Shiragani, please. This is Shiragani. I, I mean, I, I mean, I want to, I want, I want to talk to Miyuki, please. <laughs> <laughs> it, a girl's on the phone for you. A girl's on the phone for him. And then again, like, again, those who don't know anime, calling a person by their first name the is big fucking deal. It is a huge deal. It's the reason why she immediately turned bright red when she asked for Miyuki. <laughs> And her dad and his dad just trolling the fuck out of her. Yeah, this is Shiragani. What's up? Uh, but also, that means he was running around the house either naked or in a towel. Good for him. <laughs> the hell, dad? Why are you answering my phone? One, your phone's waterproof. You said this three times in the thing. Why didn't you just have your phone with you? <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, he's in the bath. And she's like, and then made, he's in the bath. He's naked. naked. <laughs> Just oh, so like her facial, like her face art in this episode is fantastic, and it's because she's not being the princess. She's actually just being a girl, and good. <laughs> this show shines when the people can be people and aren't just toxic people or toxic right. robots. Because that's what Kaguya and Shiragani are, are toxic robots, primarily to one another, because Kaguya has proven time and time again that she is, she is, bends over backwards for Chika. <laughs> 
but allowing these people to be people are great and well fleshed out and good. <laughs> And then they finally are able to make their plans. She hangs up on him prematurely and he texts back, I just wanted to say stay warm and sleep well. Yeah. No. It was adorable. It was. And and then it's raining and the maid convinces Kaguya to cancel and he was standing there in sh- flooded Shibuya station to meet her. Yeah. And No. <laughs> I'm glad my phone's waterproof. <laughs> St- standing there with an umbrella. Not an umbrella. A magazine. Uh, so yeah, yeah, because he was going to give the umbrella to her. Because <laughs> you could. Because you can't share the umbrella. Exactly, because that would be super, super faux pas. <laughs> it's super romantic. Oh yeah, you can't share. You have to give it. And yeah, he's holding the book, and even yeah, he's got a well, book on his head. Because the whole thing with with sharing an umbrella in Japan is like. You know how in like elementary, middle, and high schoolers, like people, you know, like people will write their name with their crush's name and put a heart around it. Yep. In Japan, it's you write the two names and draw an umbrella over the top of them. No. And sharing an umbrella is like one of the super romantic, intimate, young romance things that you can do. So yeah, he can't share it with her because that would be admitting that he likes her. Uh, um, and then the final snippet of this episode happens and attack of the French yes um, so I do like how they hand wash it hey we got everything together <laughs> somehow magically it, it, it's the it's the favorite it's my, one of my favorite anime tropes and then a bunch of things happened <laughs> Um, yeah, the, everything comes together and you have these beautiful French people and this pretty little French girl comes up to them and starts talking in French and he looks at Kaguya, do you speak French? Uh, I speak a little, I guess. He's like, <laughs> look at me, I read the, I read the Japanese to French dictionary that they gave me. And let me tell you, French spoken with a Japanese accent sounds real damn weird. It does. It's so weird. Because it is obviously, yeah, like, especially Kage, like, Bravo and Kaguya's voice actress, like, learning proper ass French, (laughs) at least for a couple lines, much less Chicas. So, we get backstory. She is the daughter of an ambassador. (laughs) Yep. She's not just Kaguya's handmaiden, like. So uh, she legit. G- good job, show on making this character not a lap dog. Like she's she is powerful. Mm-hmm. But you know the one who's known for his intelligence, known for studying, and known for retaining information, just gets completely swamped because he can read French and can speak what he has learned, but anything above and beyond that. No. There is no fluency there. So the headmaster has to prove that he's going to be an antagonist. Yay, that's something that we needed. I guess. He has to prove that Shirogani is the right pick for student council president. I'm guessing because he's probably a Kaguya's dad suck up or something along those lines. And Kaguya should be president, yada yada. Um, or because, or because Miyuki really seems to be nouveau riche. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's yeah, he seems to yeah, exactly, literally nouveau riche, new money, like, um, and no power. Like he's he's there because he got really good scores. I'm guessing. <laughs> like, yep. yeah, and his family, even though they're they're probably rich as fuck to be able to afford that tuition yeah but he still bikes to school they still interact like normal people he cooks his own food every day like cooks his own food made from vegetables his grandparents sent from their farm yeah so yeah he it is obvious that either they may have won the lottery or something along those lines because he grew up poor and it's very obvious like because he doesn't know how to be money because all this money and he has to talk himself into getting a smartphone. (laughs) 
in Japan of all places. Yeah, where there are smartphone vending machines. And I'm not joking about that, by the way. Um, and then he's like, I'm going to send out this, the, the, vi- the vice, uh, the, 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 the vice president of the French school's student council. And I thought it was going to be a flirty thing. Like I thought she was going to go out there and be the vixen. No, she was the attack poodle. Yes. <laughs> With her razor blade tongue. Yes. This show feels very like lampooning food wars, which lampoons a lot of other things. Yeah, I could see it. And I think that might be where one of my disconnects is. Like this is obviously just like rich, straight up, just rich people. Totsky. (laughs) And these two are seats. One and two of the elite 10. Like, well, the, the all controlling student council is a major trope. Yeah. Japan fucking loves that trope. Because, I mean, we see we see the, the Elite Ten in Shokugeki. We see, you know, Kill the Kill had the student yep. council. Utena had the student council. Like, the student council are fucking everywhere. Yeah. A- any show that you have set in, which admittedly is a lot of anime set in middle high school, all yeah, are going to have a strong student council. Even, like fate did that a little bit like they i don't know if in japan that the student council is a much bigger thing from here but i was vice president i was vice president of my student council in high school i did shit but once a week (laughs) and even then it wasn't much (laughs) like yeah and there's also you know there's perspective shift as well to where when you're in that age group it feels like a much bigger deal yeah yeah that's true um, and then, yeah, I'm just doing the, uh, giving the, uh, mob slash Saitama. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Wee wee. We, yeah, we, 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 he's so brilliant. He's taking all of her attacks. <laughs> and then she's like, she's, she's doing that whole thing. I was, I'm surprised they didn't immediately go into like a boxing ring where she's just punching him over and over and over again. And he's not moving and she's wearing herself out. Right. Cause we get like the, the banshee psychic whale going on. Yeah. And, and lo- <laughs> the, the, the zero chill narrator, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> she's insulting his parents, his ancestors, his every bit of his being. Uh, uh-huh. we, we, uh-huh. that's so true. <laughs> And then, oh, and then Kaguya comes out swinging. Then the rage beast comes out because she finally is able to pay her pay attention to a couple for a couple seconds about what's going on, and just rips this woman to shreds to a point where she puts this razor tongue beast into tears. And then a very interesting thing happens after that. I'm sorry you had to see that it's like the old me. She mentioned in an earlier episode too that she's trying to become more likable. Yeah, because they did, at the first episode, they very flashed over the fact that she was a straight up see you next Tuesday when she first got in there. Like she was a beast and a bitch like all through and through. And then it took the six months to a year that they almost a year that they've been working together that she's finally been able to not have to be that person. Now, apparently that person was a vulgar, insulting person, which doesn't really surprise me knowing Japanese business ethics. (laughs) And it's it was amazing watching her be that open and straight up apologizing for going back to what it was the way she was. And again, when the show allows these people to be people, it does a really good job. Yeah, it do. And then I'm guessing she tells him that she loves him in French. That is, that is my guess is what happened there. Probably. Or whatever language, because he's like, that wasn't French. No, she said she must have said in some other language because he's like, that's not French. Is it Finnish? Is it this? Is it that? 
<laughs> and I would imagine that it's not English either because Japanese school and learning English and all that. So I, I would guess that. Plus, I mean, let, let's be fair, As, especially English. Yeah. The, the I love you in Japan. Yeah. Like I, that's fucking everywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Saying I love you in English is actually a thing that I've learned in Japan is still like culturally acceptable. Like, you know, there, there is the, I think it's Daisuke is Daisuke desu. Yeah. Or, or ski desu if you don't, if you don't want to be super emphatic. Yeah. And, and then Americans are a lot more hyperbolic than Japanese are. Yeah. Well, yes. We're <laughs> Americans. Americans are a lot more hyperbolic than a lot of other cultures. <laughs> Um, there's a reason it's the hyperbolic time chamber in the English dub. Yes, exactly. I I, I believe, I believe in the, in the original Japanese, it translates roughly to like the room of time and souls or something. uh, Room of spirit of time, spirit and time. Yes. Um, and yeah, even in the dragon ball dub, that's what it was. Like it wasn't hyperbolic time chamber. until Z. Um, and their weird first, the ocean dub, but we don't talk about that here. <laughs> um, the only thing that came out of that was Scott McNeil Piccolo, and that was good stuff. Um, it, yeah, it was adorable. Like these couple of like episode four was good. I really enjoyed episode four. Episode three was continuing along with the same. And if I had my same three and out rule that I hold to, I may have dropped this after three because it was just ultimately not my kind of show. Right. And I was afraid of that to begin with. Um, And the main reason why I was like, all right, fine, we'll do this is one, just wouldn't shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> and two, uh, I'm a businessman and there's a lot of SEO behind this damn show. <laughs> so, uh, hey, at least I'm honest with you guys. <laughs> Um, but yeah, episode four was likable. I enjoyed it. Characters could be characters and didn't, weren't just entirely these three same beats. So, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see when the, uh, the, the next side character gets introduced. Cause if you notice in the, the opening and ending sequences, there's a boy there's a guy with headphones. Yeah, exactly. It's probably the other student council guy that they mention is never around cause he's in and out so fast. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so it'll, be, it, it'll be interesting to see how how he plays into the dynamic. Yeah, yeah, student council treasurer. I'm guessing that would be my guess. Yeah, since we have vice president, the president, vice president, and secretary, and yeah, we we're gonna have to have a treasurer or something along those lines. Oh man! All right, you guys. So before we get into our actual outro, Daryl recorded us an outro that I want to get and I want to play here really quick to head us out of this episode. All right, CJ and the gang, and of course everyone listening to the Britishness of my voice. Sorry I can't stay longer, you apparently cover many more episodes than on S4, but thank you for having me. I hope you can forgive me for butchering the names tonight, but some of them are pretty outlandish. How on earth am I supposed to say CJ anyway? Thank you, and good night. Absolutely, Daryl. Thank you so much for doing these. I... I liked them. Um, I I, love them. I did give him some feedback on it and he's like, yeah, I will watch out of context a couple of episodes next week and next show. If you guys still want me to do these and I will give you. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Like watch these completely with zero context, zero prefect, just come into them. And I can't wait for him to say something about slime after he just comes into the fallout of Millum. Yes. (laughs) Especially when he's been referring to Millam as he this yeah. entire time. As a boy, yes. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. Well, it doesn't help that it's the demon lord. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, they just don't, it's just one of those things that they don't gender it and uh, for whatever reason. So Yeah, because it's actually Ma'o, but. Yeah. Which you know, roughly translates to that. I mean, it doesn't roughly, it actually translates to it, but. Okay, never mind. Uh, nevertheless, okay. Uh, you can email the show, show at geek-io.net, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or also slash geek.io show. You can give us a call, leave us a voicemail, 727-489-4335. That is 727-489-GEEK. Remember, this, you can support this stream and everything that we do on the Geek.io network by heading over to patreon.com slash geek.io. It's February, y'all. 
So that means I'm going to go back on my tirade again. One new patron a month. Low as a dollar a month. You don't even have to pay per episode, per week. Anything like that is once per month. We're not asking a ton. And even if it's just that extra dollar, that goes a long ass way. And you get a master feed. You get, it's completely ad free, which if you listen to the show on podcasts or on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts, you notice that we have ads at the beginning and end. Patreon doesn't have those. Just saying, dollar a month. If you don't like listening to this, and I, I know because I binged our old episodes of Exploding Dice, the ads that they play get real repetitive real fast. And we don't choose them. It's not us. I promise. <laughs> we love our sponsors, but yeah, when you hear the same commercial for whatever they're pimping for 36 times in a row, you kind of get tired of it and no longer right. want to listen to it. Love it. Patreon.com slash Geek.io. Also, link your Discord account, geek-io.net slash Discord, to your Patreon, and you get access, you get a cool, you get a cool colored name, and you get access to a patron-only chat and everything like that. It's real cool. It's awesome. And we love you even more for it. All right, guys. For all of us here, including Raul, who is sick, feel better, brother, and Justin, who is sleep-deprived because of baby, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Say bye, Justin. Justin. Bye. Thank you. No. No, I haven't done, I haven't done AOS. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, go to Geek Out Show. You have been listening to a Geek IO Media Network LLC production. Would you like to convert that to pounds? Copyright 2019. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> All right, guys, it is 12.15, so fuck your post-show.